first time I, I f fell in love with anyone. And um, I, was, um, I was 19 and I grew up in um, Pukeatua, which is a little kind of farming district with a closed down post office and a little primary school, closed down general store. And it's like backwater Waikato. And uh, when, um, when I sort of realised I was gay, I, I always felt that I didn't fit in very well. Um, I didn't know the names of 1940s women movie stars, and I, I, I just didn't, didn't have all that kind of shit together very well. And, um, and um, I, I, I was working up in Northland, and um, I still felt quite lonely as a gay man because I always felt really uncomfortable um, doing the bogs. And um, I came down to Auckland one weekend and uh, I went into a gay, gay bar and I, I, mean, I don't even drink alcohol. And uh, so it was always a bit strange sitting in there breathing in cigarette smoke and, and drinking an overpriced fruit juice. And, um, and I, saw, I saw Ian over by the bar and he was looking pretty uncomfortable too. On his pants, he had um, cow shit from where he'd been wearing his gumboots. It just, I thought that was like a really good sign, so I, I, I finally got up the courage and went over and, and said to him, um, uh, um, was he having trouble with milk fever? And uh, milk fever's a disease of uh, dairy cattle, and it's really prominent in the spring. There's a calcium deficiency, and, and uh, he, he laughed because, I mean, it's not the standard pickup line in a bar. And, um, and so I guess while everyone else was talking about interiors and investments and all the other proper things to talk about, we were talking about grass staggers and eczema and foot rot. And, um, and I felt for the first time that I'd met, I'd, I'd met a man who, um, who was a gay man and he was also like me. And that, was, that was in the spring when we met, uh, and uh, the first panel was the hills outside, our, outside the bedroom in spring, with the spring light on them and the, the sort of white skies that you get in, in, in springtime here. And uh, there's the tea tree growing up the side, and it's the hill it's the hill that's here in the big picture, this, this hill here, that appears in the four corners, because views from a bedroom always seem to be quite significant things, you know? And um, so, yeah, so that was the, like the start of the relationship. And um, I, I discovered later that he made us a cup of tea because he'd, he'd asked what I drank, and I said, oh, no, just tea. And he said, how do you have it? And I said, oh, cow shed, which is like lots of milk, because um, in the cow shed, you always have a cup of tea, you always have a teapot there and milk's free and plentiful so it tends to be lots of milk and a bit of something to heat it up and he hated he hated tea hated it he actually really drank heaps of coffee so when i when i painted it um i painted his face in coffee it sounds a bit bizarre but it's, it actually stains really well and and uh, i painted the panel um here and here in coffee too and um and coffee wouldn't make the calico go hard. It would keep it soft so that his face, um, his face is always soft, you know, when you touch it. But the sky and the land, they're, they're hard. They crinkle and crack. But, but he won't ever. And, um, and uh, when I was making it, there, he used to have this thing about me wanting to be perfect all the time, which meant also being a perfect gay and a, perfect farmer and a perfect everything else and, uh, and bugging me down when I was painting the thing the, um, the coffee I was working on on his face spilt and, and bled out over the perfect sky and I was really angry there's coffee stains still under there it's just I slapped another coat of paint over and the coffee kept working its way through so I thought well we just leave it just leave it and um, the, I put on um, baling twine that's what this is around here, sewed all around the picture, because um, the, the, the year that we were on the block, the, or the year that I, I was going down to see them, it was, um, they, they replaced jute, which was a common baling twine, um, with this plastic stuff. And um, um, I got some from my mum and dad, 
when I was making the quilt, I, I went home when it was when I started making the quilt. And it was really funny because, um, you know, this was my first relationship, and Mum and Dad had a lot of trouble coming to terms with me being gay. And I guess because I was a bit of a loud mouth, that didn't help it help things. And uh, and uh, I, I was really angry at them for not coming to terms with it. You know, I thought, well, shit, you know, if you loved me, then you'd understand that I was gay. And, and uh, Ian said to me, um, you've got to understand that it, it's taken you 19 years to come to terms with being gay. Why should they come to terms with it overnight? Which really pissed me off, because you know, who wants to be told truths like that? Fabrics on it aren't flesh, like they're not all shiny because um, they're just as work clothes. Um, corduroy pants and um, this brushed cotton shirt and um, a bit off the sofa and um, and and brushed cotton because he wore pyjamas <laughs> I mean nobody I knew wore pyjamas this is our, our tow rope because it's a real kind of I guess I've, I am and, and, and he was real sort of sensible shoes mentality stuff like um, no nonsense mucking around and um, and the tow rope it was, there's three of them, but I, I just stripped it down to one and, and put that on because the tow rope was what holds things together and what pulls you through, pulls you out of trouble, um, keeps things um, strong, it's reliable, and and that's what, that's what my relationship was and that was what he was like and that's echoed in here. Um, he iti, he iti kai katoa is a, uh, it's not a saying, it's a, it's words, well it is a kind of saying, from Māori it uh, talks about um, a small tree, a um, small scrubby tree, the, this, this same tree here, the um, manuka, a tea tree, and um, it's, it's only a scrubby little tree and it always grows back when, um, when, you've, um, when you've cleared the land and burnt it off, a little while it'll come back and it's good firewood but um, it's hard as. and. Um, you, it's little and strong, and that's what he was like. like he, was, he was a little guy, but um, where my strength was kind of stroppy and um, confrontational, if, if someone sort of yelled out faggot, I mean, I was over there abusing hell out of him. But his was d d much stronger, much deeper strength. The, w when I left, he, he gave me this poem. It was a poem that he'd said to me one night and it was about the stars, and it was by Yeats. And um, it's, it's, it's very, very beautiful, and it's about um, dreams, and about putting, laying down your dreams, and risks, and probably in the broader view about not being afraid of loving, and not being afraid of, of crying, and not being afraid of, of, all, of all those things. And, um, it's got a bit tattered now on the quilt, I guess, travelling with time, but the essence of it is still there. And um, it says, um, had I the heavens embroidered cloths and wrought, and wrought with the gold and silver light, the blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and half light, I would spread the cloths under your feet, but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. I, I still keep that, still keep that poem in my studio because it reminds me that I guess it's probably almost about what the quilt is too, the whole thing. It's about people laying dreams and even physically that people walk around them, dreams laid at your feet.